This video is sponsored by JLC PCB. For just two dollars, you can get ten pieces of your two-layer PCB. Simply upload your Gerbil file and check your designs before ordering the PCB. With live tracking facility of the manufacturing process, you can now get your PCBs with a 48 hours turnaround time for no additional cost. The PCBs are delivered directly from their factory to your doorstep. Their huge factory allows them to manufacture PCBs at a faster rate. So now they have a quick turnaround time of just 48 hours. And with reliable shipping partner, you get your PCBs quickly than ever. So go ahead and check out the website at jlcpcb.com. Hi everyone, my name is JCRP and you are watching Kalakar Makerspace videos. Welcome to the third video of our drone series. This series is possible because of Robotics Arena team. So huge thanks to them. Please check out their details in the description. There are totally 8 episodes and all have been added to a playlist which is linked in the description. Do check that out so that you don't miss any of the episodes. Also consider contributing on Patreon so that we can keep making such videos. In this episode, we will take a look at the electronic components required to make a drone. The components consist of motor, propellers, ESC, battery, flight controller, receiver and transmitter and also power distribution board and wires. Flight controller, receiver and transmitter will need its own video, so we will see that later. So for now, we will see the rest of the components. First is the motor. There are two main types of motors that we normally know, the brushed and the brushless DC motors. Brushed motors are used in day-to-day -day life like cordless drills, fans and virtually everywhere. But for for the drones, we need brushless motors mostly. That's required for the drones to take flight. Such capabilities are not possible with brushed motors, but they are used in small drones. For building a hobby grade drone, you need to have brushless DC motors. Now let's have a closer look at the BLDC motor and its parameters. BLDC means brushless DC motors. First, the motor size. The size of the brushless motor is usually indicated by a four digit number in the format like AA and BB. Here AA is the stator width and BB is the stator height. So in this case, 22 denotes the stator width and 13 denotes the stator height. So the taller the stator, the higher the RPM and wider the stator, the higher the torque. Now the question is, when do you need higher RPM or higher torque? For example, when you are flying a racing drone and changing direction is of more importance, then a higher RPM is better. And when the drone has a higher payload like a DSLR or a package, then higher torque is required to carry them. Usually you have to find a balance between the RPM and the torque based on the purpose of your drone. Let's see about RPM. RPM is the abbreviation for revolutions per minute which simply tells you how faster the motor can spin. But in the drone world, this is usually calculated using the KV ratings and that's what we'll be seeing next. The KV ratings of the motor tells you how fast the motor will rotate when one volt is applied and no load is attached. For example, a 650 KV motor powered by a 11.1 volt, that is a 3 cell LiPo battery, would spin at 7215 RPM with no load. When you change the applied voltage or when you add the load, the RPM will obviously change. So by now you would have understood that we cannot make a multi-purpose drone. A drone that is made for racing cannot carry a heavy payload. So from the beginning, the purpose of the drone should be very clear. So once we know the payload weight or the total weight of the drone, then we can select the suitable KV ratings. The higher the KV ratings, the lesser the thrust. Lesser thrust means less payload can be carried and vice versa. For example, if you are building a racing drone, then a motor with a KV rating between 1500 to 2000 is ideal. And for a payload kind of drone, the KV rating should be between 800 to 1400. Let's see about the current ratings. Generally, you will find two types of current ratings mentioned in the description of the motor. Peak current and continuous current. Once the drone is powered on for 180 seconds, the current consumption of the motor is is more. This is called as peak current. Peak current is also consumed when you are flying the drone and you make sudden turns or change the direction. Whenever you put stress on the motor, it's peak current. The peak current values are important when you choose the ESC. The ESC or the electronic speed controller controls the speed of the motor. The second is continuous current. Continuous current which is lesser than the peak current and it happens only when the drone is hovering or moving calmly in a straight line. What you have to mainly look out for is the continuous current. This decides the flight time of the drone because most of the times you will be flying the drone in a straight line or just be hovering. So it is the continuous current that will be consumed most of the time and that will decide the size of the battery. Thrust. This is the force that the drone applies to lift from the ground. 
as we discussed before the stator height decides the thrust value and lower the kv ratings the higher the thrust the rule of thumb with the thrust is that if the drone is going to carry a 1 kg of load then the total thrust from all the motors should be twice of that that is 2 kgs so the weight to thrust ratio is 1 is to 2 but remember that a quadcopter has 4 motors so 2 kg is divided equally into 4 motors that is 500 grams per motor so when you select a motor with kv ratings in this case it should be able to provide 500 grams of thrust if the thrust provided by the motor is too less then the copter will not respond well to your commands and might be unstable similarly overpowering the copter with higher thrust of motor is not a good solution and balancing will be a huge issue next are the propellers thrust also depends on the propellers that you use larger propellers will generate more thrust than the smaller ones usually a motor manufacturer will give you a table in which he will mention the propeller size and input voltage to get the required amount of thrust it's better if we take a look at this table and decide the propeller size but if the table is not available which is rare then we have to use a thrust measurer which is available in a kit format too just increasing the propeller size to generate more thrust will be inefficient and can heat up the motors. A 12 inch and a 10 inch propeller can generate the same amount of thrust but with different current values. It is important to choose the motor which provides the lift with less current so that we have a lighter battery or longer flight time and to avoid overheating. While purchasing the propeller there are two specs which you have to look for diameter and pitch. For example a 9 by 4 propeller has a diameter of 9 and a pitch of 4. The diameter is the end to end length in the inches and pitch of the propeller is the distance in which drone can travel in one revolution. The number of blades is also important. There are a variety of propellers available in the market with two blade, three blade or even four blade. As the blade number increases, the thrust increases. Also the motor uses more current to rotate them which results in less efficiency. A three blade propeller can lift more payload but for less amount of time because of the power consumption. The two bladed propellers are efficient in producing the thrust and it gives a good ratio as well. Materials of the propeller will make difference in flight times and efficiency. Generally carbon fiber propellers are lighter and tend to provide longer flight times. But we will be using a plastic one for this and that is plenty efficient too. Now that we have seen motors and propellers, let's look at electronic speed controller which makes the motor rotate and we saw in the first episode for a drone to fly the motors have to rotate in the opposite direction and an ESC makes this happen. As the name suggests electronic speed controller it manages the speed of the motor which in turn decides the direction and maneuverability of the drone. An ESC is chosen after the motors are decided because it should be capable of handling the peak currents and the voltage requirements of the motor. But an ESC alone when connected to a battery will not work. We need a flight controller which will send instructions to the ESC. Flight controller is the brain of the drone so it needs a separate video for that. That will be our next episode. Also we will look into the wiring of ESC in the fifth video. Next are the batteries, especially LiPo batteries. LiPo stands for lithium polymer. These batteries are lightweight and provide good performance over the lithium ion batteries. LiPo has a better power to weight ratio. With a smaller amount of weight, it packs a huge amount of amperes. A single onboard battery should power up an entire system including the flight controller, motor, ESC. So choosing that is very important. A LiPo battery is constructed from individual cells which are normally 3.7 volts. By connecting these cells together in various ways, we can make different LiPo batteries with various voltages and capacities. Let's take a look at the common parameters mentioned in the battery and what it means. First one is the battery voltage and cell count. The battery voltage is the combined voltage of all the cells put together and each cell has a nominal voltage of 3.7 volts when it is in storage mode. When fully charged, the individual cell reaches up to 4.2 volts. It is advised not to drain the cell voltages below 3.3 volts. Battery voltage is often decided by how many cells are present in the battery. 1S is one cell which equals to 3.7 volts. 2S is two cells which equals to 7.4 volts. 3S is three cells which equals to 11.1 volts and so on. The capacity of a battery is measured in milliamp hours. For example, Think of milliampers as the amount of fuel in your car. The more the fuel, the farther the car can run. The MAH ratings like 2200 MAH is 2.2 amperes per hour. It is the amount of energy the battery can hold. Next is the discharge rate. It defines how fast you can extract the energy from your battery. If your motor draws more energy than what your battery can provide, you will possibly damage your battery, which can result in crashing of your drone. 
To choose the right battery we first need to calculate the total amperes required by the entire electronics. Then we multiply the C rating of the battery to the MAH. If the multiplied value is greater than the requirement then it is a perfect battery. So the battery capacity in MAH divided by the current consumption gives the flight time of your drone. Next is the power distribution board. Since all the components are powered from a single battery, power distribution board helps in dividing the power efficiently among all the components. Only using a distribution board, your battery can provide power to the ESCs. Then the battery connectors. There are different types of connectors like JST, XT60, DIN, etc. Let's see the connectors and its uses so you know when to use them. JST is used to send signals from the flight controller to other components. DIN connectors can withstand up to 30 to 40 amperes and XT60 can take up to a lot of ampere loads. So you choose the right connector based on the current requirements. Finally, the charger. The charger monitors the voltage of each cell and charges them individually. This is called as load balance charging and it is the best way to charge a cell to have a longer life. Before buying the charger, make sure the charger has cell compatibility, correct current sourcing capabilities and power output. By that we mean that it should be able to charge the cell individually. The IMAX B6 is a widely used charger but make sure that you get the genuine one. With that we have come to the end of this third episode. I know it's a very long one but we wanted to pack as much information as possible. If you have stuck till the end then we are glad that our efforts did not go in vain. Also do let us know in the comments that you saw the entire video. As always all the details of the videos are given in the description. Please check the playlist for the entire video series and do subscribe to our channel. Videos like this take a lot of effort so please make sure that you can contribute via Patreon. Hope to see you in the fourth episode which is about the flight controller. Until next time. Happy learning.